All right, go ahead and do. Let's do. Let's do a mic check. Uh, Tell me how my mic sound. How my mic sound. <laughs> Tell me how my mic sound. How my mic sound. <laughs> So Tyrone, like, uh, what did you think of Justin's League? You were kind of quiet there. Uh, man, I was just letting you two just ride along because that's why you know I wanted Justin to be here to uh, to to ride along with this. It is a four hour long, you know, epic movie. Uh, I I did give it a, a nine out of ten mainly because I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to definitely see, uh, and I'm glad that Zack Snyder was able to you know, fulfill his completion. And um, some of my my things that I liked about the film is that uh, I believe, and especially in, in the section that was t- entitled uh, Beloved Mother, Beloved Son, I believe that Cyborg is the, the heart of this film. And the reason why I believe that Cyborg is the heart of this film is because... He definitely is. You know, he lost his mother. He lost his father. And then he's such a good guy. And I just don't understand to the life of me why Josh Whedon wanted to take that out. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just... Yeah, because it looked like a lot of that was recorded. Like, it looked like they, like, like they had a lot of that footage. Because some of it showed up in the in the, in their commercials. Yes. Like, with him being... With him football, playing football and all that stuff. All of that. And I'm like, yo, it's... That, that was the, the thing that that wrapped me in. I, and I, I wanted more of that. And I actually out, I would, I would, I'm sorry, please go ahead. I, I, I read somewhere that they said that, uh, Zack Snyder admitted saying that this movie in, was supposed to launch a single cyborg movie. That's what I read somewhere. I mean, you can kind of tell cause cyborg more or less is the main character of this film. Uh, but I think the reason why, I think I think the reason why Josh Whedon cut a lot of the cyborg stuff was because it was redundant, and and redundancy is like the king of Zack Snyder, and so I think <laughs> Josh Whedon and WB they had to choose which characters they wanted to highlight. Because can you can you imagine? Just put your put your, put your put yourself in the shoes of a WB executive, mm. and Zack Snyder comes to you have a yacht. with this. I have a yacht. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're 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 sitting on your yacht. You're sipping martinis, whatever you like. What, what do you like to sip, Tyrone? Uh, Coronas. <laughs> okay, you got a Corona in your hand. Zack Snyder shows shows up with this movie, a four hour long movie. And now you you know that anything over an hour and a half, not only is it boring, but Tyrone, you lose money every minute past an hour and a half. You could have that person could have been in another WB movie. They could have bought another ticket. Yeah. So you lose money. So they show up to you in your yacht with this four hour epic, and you've got to cut it down to an hour and a half. You've got to choose which characters to highlight and which characters not to highlight. Amongst the characters are Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Do you really think Cyborg is gonna get into that mix? No, he's going to be the first one to go. <laughs> I mean, that's why he got cut. Because they're like, look, we don't need another sad guy. The second, got... the second one to go was Barry Allen. So. Exactly, exactly. It, make, it makes total sense. They just followed the money. They were like, look, these guys are less less lucrative, so let's highlight Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, our, our stars. Which is so wrong, because and that's why I can't put myself in the shoes of an executive, because I don't, but they... I don't chase the money. I chase the art. You give me the art. But they had to, man, because Zack Snyder backed him into a corner <laughs> by making all the characters identical. So they probably thought, oh, well, who cares? The movie won't change at all. We can cut this whole character out of the movie, and, it, and, and the movie won't change. And that, that, that's kind of one of the things that I was surprised about this movie is that while being twice as long as the original, it was strangely the same. It was, very, it was a very similar experience watching this film as it was watching the original. And I was kind of surprised g- given how given how long the film is. So the executive people, they were probably like, let's just cut some of these side characters down or completely out. And they did. 
like there's that scene with the Flash saving uh, Iris. I forget, I forget what her Iris name West. is. Yeah, Iris. Mm-hmm. And that scene was completely cut out. It was in the commercial, but it was completely cut out. Yep. Uh, and I can I understand why they cut it out because it didn't do anything. It did. Without the scene, nothing happens. With the scene, nothing happens. He gets a job at the end of the scene, right? Which is I guess is the utility of the scene but he never works the job we never see him work the, mm-hmm. there doesn't mean anything the, the dogs don't so you that's you cut that scene Zack snyder backed people into a corner by shooting the same scene a thousand times and if i can go for on for just a second about that scene with iris when i was watching that scene i often think to myself does Zack snyder know what he's doing and i think in that scene i'm not sure if he does so Iris Iris gets into a car crash. Yep. And she's flying through the she air. She is. Right? And it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? He's What's he was that? caressing her face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, he's like he's like oogling her while she's like in the throes of death. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> you're so pretty. And I'm like, this this lady's in moral da- mortal danger. Please, please get her down. <laughs> but as he's doing it, right, it's like as, as, as he's doing it, there's a hot dog. And it's, like, creeping into the yep. shot. And I'm like, does he know that this looks like a dick sliding into the shot and that <laughs> Harry <laughs> Allen's getting a heart on? Is, is, he, is he aware uh, that this looks like... It looks like Mary Allen's getting a It looks like a, like a phallus. But... <laughs> yes. And then he grabs it and puts it in his pocket, and I'm like, he doesn't... He's not aware. I think he thought that was funny. And I'm just, like, dumbfounded. And this is my problem with Zack Snyder. I think Zack Snyder could be and should be a producer or a cinematographer. He's got a lot of talent. This man is talented. This is what this is what's frustrating about Zack Snyder. This man is talented. He knows how to make a good-looking scene. He knows how to make things look awesome. Right. But he, is, he does not know how to tell a story. And he is not interested you, in telling stories. But do you story. feel that he does not know how to tell a story with already well-known IPs? Um, I've never seen him work on an original IP. I've 300 is original, isn't it? It is not. That is a comic book based, with Fra- uh, Frank based Miller, on a Frank Miller yeah, comic. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> he, I've never... <laughs> and his first movie, uh, was it Dawn of the Dead? Yeah. Uh, that, that, that was the, probably the most original that he's done. And it's probably his best film. So, I mean, and that's and that's saying a lot. It's not a bad movie. I'm not shooting on that movie. It's just like that movie is very problematic. It's problematic because, and this is something I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get into, but Zack Snyder is a very conservative man, and he has, he has don't do it. He has very conservative ideas, and so he's really big. He wants to make. Zack Snyder's dream movie is The Fountainhead. Do you know about this? That he wants to make The Fountainhead film? What the hell is The Fountainhead? (laughs) Great response, Tyrone. Thank you for saying that. (laughs) The Fountainhead is a book by Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand is a social political scientist person. I don't know. She's the person that all the all your young Republicans, they all quote. And she's really into this idea that there are two types of people. There are the doers, the makers, and the moochers. And if you're a maker, you're important, and society should bend over backwards for you. They should look at you with reverence like they do with Superman. <laughs> and if, you, if you're a moocher, your life doesn't really matter. You don't. No one should really extend too much resources to you, which is why Superman can level Metropolis and not think anything of it. And that that kind of ideas permeate throughout his movies. Not only to me, not only are his movies boring, but they've got like a nasty core. They've got like this like core of like gross stuff that I don't like. And he's very consistent. To give him his to give him his due, he's very consistent with that, yeah. and I'm not I'm not really into it. And I think unless you're like, for me, unless you're like ten or fifteen, you know, it's 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 like it's like a it's like a young boy's version of cool. It's like when you're 
when me and you were in high school, I can't I can't imagine how awesome we would have thought these movies yeah. were. Yeah. I can't imagine. But as an adult, I find I find them painful. Uh... What's that new what's the new game that's coming out? What is that new game coming out? Uh, Suicide Squad game? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we see another version of Mad Superman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you're right. And, and I, I, it's like the, the the red-eyed, glowing, ominous Superman. I I find that to be the the least interesting version of the exactly. character. Exactly. We've and we've seen. There's not there's not a lot you can do with now, it. But please go we've ahead. We've seen that all the time, and it's it's getting to a point to where Superman's feelings is messing up the continuity of the actual art that he's in. It, mm-hmm. The way that that Zack Snyder is making them and other creators, especially like like the dude whoever who wrote uh, uh wouldn't it be surprising if <laughs> Zack Snyder wrote the game <laughs> wrote that part of the game. <laughs> the game. He just stepped over to the okay. studio. Oh yeah. Like, oh my god. Hey guys, I just want to check in with you guys. You guys need any pointers? I could tell you some pointers right now. <laughs> right now some stuff. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um uh 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 speaking just on on how Superman's character could be. Uh, if Zack Snyder chose to do it this way, apparently I haven't watched this. Maybe I have to watch it. There's a show on WB called Superman and Lois. And people are saying that this is the best iteration of Superman that they have seen. I've heard that too. I've heard, I've not, but I haven't watched the show I, either. So maybe I should maybe check it out. Maybe we should check it out and review it right here on Mostly Wrong Opinions. But... um. <laughs> I think it could. It, we could learn something from it, and if we learn, if we go there, we learn something from that, and we see like, okay, why can't Zack Snyder learn how to treat Superman this way? Is 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 and not saying he has well, to copy I, him or anything like that. I'm just saying it's like if that's more comic book accurate to the to the many of the uh, of the of the comics that's out there, I'm gonna say what the what the hell is Zack Zack doing? Yeah, I, I think again I'm not so I'm not so worried about comic book accuracy. It's just that there's nowhere to go with an angry Superman, right? He either destroys the world or he doesn't. There's no nuance with an angry Superman. Yeah. And and uh, I was kind of speaking of angry Superman when he woke up angry in this movie. I'm like, why? The, why, why, why did he ang- why did he wake up immediately wanting to kill everyone? I did, I, and I thought in the original film that this was something that was explained and got cut out. I was like, oh, I guess I guess that was probably something with, uh, you know, uh, Whedon probably cut that out. But it's not in this film either. He just wakes up angry, and and this and Zack Snyder does this without without thinking. He's just like, yeah, he's he's angry. Duh. Kinda, what else would he be? They're kind of making it seem like, like Kryptonians are already angry by it. when they go when they come maybe. into this world, until they they leave from their galaxy with the red sun. They come over here to where the yellow sun is. The yellow sun is making them change all the attributes of who they were, even over there. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like it didn't make any sense to me why he woke up angry. <laughs> it was, and I had that same problem in the original, which is why I think that strangely this film is the experience is very much like watching the original film. It's I, I was surprised how you add two hours to the film and it doesn't. It feels the same. I, I was kind of in, surprised by that. I am interested in your notes, though, Tyrone, because because I told you I started I started writing notes and then I stopped, and because I was like, "What in the? What am I but doing?" I, I, I'm I'm going to read you some of my notes while I was watching this movie. Mm-hmm. First note: IMAX format is obnoxious. <laughs> and then the next note was about Bruce Wayne. And then Bruce Wayne immediately buys off poor people so that he could talk to Aquaman. I thought that was so, so funny. Very Randian. I was like, okay. okay. He just buys them all off. And then I was like, Aquaman is being treated like a god and people are singing songs when he leaves.
Because remember he jumped. Yeah, he went to the water, and the girls started singing. That's what my. That's what my. Uh, one of my notes was. I was like a musical. <laughs> yeah, I was is like, this a huh? musical? And 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 that's... someone put um someone put a uh, uh, uh put up a uh, meme of Aquaman in the water with his shirt off, and then they had the the, the last woman who was singing the blonde chick when she picked up the teddy bear she squeezed it and smelt it that had his scent on it and then it said horniest <laughs> girl funny. in the dcu <laughs> that's really funny like, yeah, yeah the, the movie has a lot of has a lot of moments like that where yeah people are just like fawning over over our main characters yeah sniffing the teddy bear after he touches it and stuff like that yeah this is really weird funny. i was also I was also laughing at Wonder Woman using her bracers around children. Because if her bracers reflect bullets, wouldn't she be afraid of it ricocheting and killing a child? But she didn't seem to give a and fuck. And that was my that was my thing um in the <laughs> in the beginning and, and don't count on it, Batman, where I said oh, and a lot of cheesy dialogue on the mascara. And they were mm. in, when <laughs> when they were talking about the mother box and she and the, the queen would turn around and be like no, 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 I'm like, yeah, why are you turning funny. around and the threat is in front of you? <laughs> Talk. To yeah, I'll sing that too. She's turning her back. The mother box is like shaking and lights are coming out, yeah. and she's like, "Hey," I'm like, "Yo," <laughs> I didn't get that. That was such a weird funny. Uh, shot. It's like. Zack Snyder would it shoot was. them in, in a wider version that has the three women that's there and the closer to the frame. And then you have the mother box over here freaking out. And the two behind the queen would be saying something. The queen turns around, get to another shot that has them in a the close shot of of her talking to it. And then the queen turns back around and it turns back. I'm like, what's going on? And see, this one, this one, and the, and the end, the end result of that makes it feel like the mother box is not really a threat because she's turning her back to it. Now the, they, he could have, he could have organized that room however he wanted, but he organized it like that, which is, which is why I'm like, does he, does he, cause he have control of his camera. <laughs> does he know, does he know what these shots mean? With to have the queen turn her back to the to this mother box, which is supposed to be this world-ending doohickey, like, and it's freaking out. In on oh, my notes right here, I said uh, the age of heroes. I, scenes are originally out of place because mm. as compared to what the the Josh Whedon version into this, I'm like, oh, that came before, or this explains why that came before mm-hmm. in the original right. cut out, like. When when they shot that arrow across the freaking sky and it, I and that it lit too. up, and, but in the original version she just turns to a TV and then it's just like it's on fire. Yeah. Is she supposed to right, know something right. from that fire, <laughs> right, you know? Right. So it's just. It's a lot. I did like I did like when Gal Gadot uh, keeps uh, Wonder Woman sees the fire. And she puts she she like goes into that cave. She like she like uh, puts the arrow into the to the door. Goes into the cave, and she sees those old ancient cave paintings of like a fight. And and um, Dark Side is one of the cave paintings. I thought that looked awesome. I was like, oh, that's really creepy. My question. That's my cool. question at that time, which it, 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 it was answered in the. Uh, it was probably answered in the beloved mother, and beloved son section where. I said, why is the dark side tomb underneath a Roman uh, uh, pill mm. or Roman stuff? And I was like, oh, they've been there before. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that was basically yeah. just like something to warn the the future uh, um, uh, Amazonian women or people around yeah. there saying that, hey, this motherfucker might come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is. This yeah, is what he yeah. looked like, and this is what we use to stop him. <laughs> All right, so because that's exactly what he looked like. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. At least you got something. You got that. You got that. You know, it's interesting out of that. You know <laughs> what? Oh, like things I like. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Look, the, I didn't hate the movie. I mean, I don't. I did. I did not like the length of the movie, and I think the length made me hate it. But I, this this is this is the movie wasn't like atrocious. It was. It, it was long and it went nowhere and it kept repeating itself and it made me sit there and watch it for four hours 
And I I think if it wasn't for this show, to be honest with you, man, and you know, I love, I, I love comic book movies. If it wasn't for this show, I wouldn't have finished it. I would, I would have fast, I would have skipped, I would have skipped forward. I would have skipped some scenes and skipped forward yeah. just to see what was well, new. We got to bring the continuity to our show by, by watching, <laughs> you know, right, stuff. Right. And... So I watched it, but I, I just. You didn't want to. I'm 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 glad it's over. I'm glad this is it. I'm glad we're done. You think I'm glad you that think I'm glad it's over. Snyder got what he you wanted. Think it's over. <laughs> yeah, I think it's over. <laughs> because because I swear to I swear to you that fans are going to be like, you know what, we want more. Let's ask more of the next Snyder cut verse. And then WB is gonna be like, oh, okay, we saw all the streams and stuff right there. Uh Zach, you wanna uh write another script and we release it on um, you know. We film it and we release it on uh, uh, HBO Max. Here's the money. <laughs> well, see, I think the reason why it is done though is because I think Ben Affleck is over it. I think his his personal issues plus his frustrations with the studio. I think he's done. So I th- I, I'd, I'd be surprised if we saw him as bad. And they said they were recasting for a new Superman. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And they're writing a new Superman right now. And speaking of Superman, I think Henry Cavill is done. I think he's expressed his frustrations with the movies, and I think maybe I don't know with WB, but just in general with with the, with this series. So I think he's done. So I think outside of Gal Gadot and Jason Momoa, uh, I think our two key players of Bat, both Batman and Superman, I I would be surprised if we ever saw them again in a in a significant way. Okay, you want to see? That's why Ezra Miller. Um. Yeah, I thought it was fine. We de- he was the only character who who had a different personality. We definitely won't. We definitely won't see Ray Fisher back because of uh, nope. how he's. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be surprised if Ray Fisher gets a job <laughs> oh, yeah. anywhere. Yeah, but he deserves it. I, he deserves a job. Yes, he's he's. If you don't know, Ray Fisher uh, has been um, talking a lot, being very vocal about his about the racism he experienced and the sexism he saw on set, specifically uh, Josh Whedon's set. Yeah. And this has upset a lot of people. Some people don't even want to talk about it. Some people don't want to touch it. Uh, but he has not, he has been very, he's been very uh, laser focused on telling this story. And he's got a lot of support from people behind the scenes. So he's doing the right thing, but I don't know if this is it's the greatest ended. thing for his career. Yeah. Yeah, that's what sucks. Cause he's he's doing the, he's doing what he should be doing. Yeah. He's he's what's funny is he's actually acting like a superhero. He's being self selfless yeah. and helping people out with, with virtually no reward. So. Yeah. Which is which is makes another great reason why I'm happy this movie came out because he was essentially the main character. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to see we got to see him shine. So hey. Kudos. Yeah. Which will actually probably work in his favor because some pe- some producers and some directors That's might right. look at that and be like, you know what? That's right. I want to work with him because I see the potential that he has as a, as a, as a right. leading man, prob- a possible leading man in this industry. Industry. So, yeah. And I I push all the the good luck towards towards him. Like I think he deserves it. I I thought his performance was just fine. I didn't see any issues with that at all, so I don't see why he can't get he can't be uh, hired for. And, and did you know that uh, the scene in that movie where, which was cut out of the original Josh Whedon version, uh, basically because you know cyborgs was all cut out. Did you know that the waitress, where in the scene where he helps out the waitress who was on hard times, she has two kids, she loses. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Did you know that that was her first scene on film? And that was the actress's. That first was her scene? first scene on film, and Josh mm-hmm. Whedon just cut all that out. And wow! Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I and I and she was like, she she released a tweet saying, uh, "Thank you to everyone who uh, pressed this forward for the the Snyder cut because uh, she's like, basically it's kind of like I filmed my stuff. Why isn't it there when it came out of theaters? You know." That was just all on the cutting room floor uh, when it released. So, and 
uh, what? Gosh, I can't remember his name because he's such a great actor. So I feel like I'm doing a monster disservice. But um, Cyborg's father. He's in Terminator. <laughs> yes, he was in Terminator, and he was kick ass in that movie. Yeah. And they have a little they have a little reference to Terminator where he dies pressing, pressing a, a button. A button. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. yeah. I see what you're doing. He was great. He was great, man. Yeah, he was awesome. It's the, so. everything that Ray Fisher put. Everything that that was that he was involved with in this film had so much emotional emotional value, and it worked. It it that that yeah. drew that was the best part of the movie. Why I understand what you just said about cutting what about when it comes to cutting, and and WB, but it's like it's what makes the movie. You basically cut yeah. you cut the movie, Josh Whedon and WB. You cut the the meat of the movie when you cut out my brother Ray Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet I bet a lot of people are wondering. They're like Devin, you've been saying good things about the movie. You said you like this. You say you like that. You like this guy's performance. How can you rate this movie so low? And it's like cooking, right? If you ever cooked before, you can have a bunch of super delicious ingredients, right? Twizzlers are quite delicious, right? And and so so are onions. They are quite delicious. But Twizzlers and onions together do not make a delicious meal. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And that's what we have here. We've got a lot of ingredients. And Zack Snyder is a, the king of picking these awesome ingredients, finding great actors, and 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 and, and lighting scenes to look amazing, and shooting them to look fantastic, epic scores and music. It feels like you're watching something that should be on like a stage, but it all comes together. And it's like, yeah, it's like Twizzlers mixed with like a steak. You know, he cracked an egg on top. Yeah. And it's like, what is this nasty <laughs> combination? Like, I like eggs. I like I like Twizzlers. You know, okay. Oh, he, he drizzled a little chocolate over there. I'm like, all right. I, I like chocolate. But it's like all of it together is a nasty mess. It's a, And this was a big buffet of a nasty. This was four hours of a mess. Mm. So... When you when you when I break it down from scene to scene, I enjoy the scenes better, but the scenes don't work with the next scene. Sometimes they completely contradict the next scene, like we were talking about earlier with the de- with with the with the um, death death stroke thing, where one moment he's like he wants to kill yeah. Batman, the next moment he's best friends with Batman. Mm-hmm. So the, the scenes don't work together, but in in their pieces, he's got these interesting moments and in, and interesting scenes and great actors, but. It doesn't all come together. Nope. I'm just going to rate it a nine. <laughs> it's, it's just what it is, man. Because I... Yeah, I think this is with like a three. So. All right. Well. It's a three, but it's a three with love. Because I'm glad this movie came out. I'm happy for everyone who gets to see it. But it's a bad movie. It's a three with love. But is it also still... <laughs> So we talked earlier about how uh, the original Justice League was a turd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said they were going to put another turd <laughs> on top of this turd. But you know what they did? Mm-hmm. They put like 17 turds on top oh of this my turd. God. <laughs> they put a lot of this. It's like in Jurassic Park, that big mound of poop. That is one big pile of shit. That's that, a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And perhaps if you want to be a scientist and dig around in the shit, you might find something interesting, you know, in the dinosaur poo. But ultimately, Ugh. it is dinosaur poo. It's this is gross. I don't want to see it again. There's no way. There's no way I will ever watch this ever again. So. Mm-hmm.